Hello friends, welcome to Crackit CSC and in this particular video we will be discussing what is computer organization and what are the some basics of computer organization and architecture. So first of all let, let's understand what is computer organization and architecture. So computer organization and architecture is a subject under which we study the internal working of the components which are used in a computer system. So we know that computer is uh, made up of several components how each component works that comes under the computer organization and architecture how these components are organized to perform in a better way so this comes under the computer organization and architecture this subject not only deals with the computer component but also deals with the computer functionality that means actually how the internal working is going on for a computer system so we will be studying that in this particular subject so the explanation of the particular subject in this complete playlist will be in two parts. In part 1, I will be explaining the computer functionality and in part 2, we will be moving on to the computer components and their internal working. So now let's quickly move, move on with the some important basics. So first of all, what is computer? So there are several definitions available online, but let's try to understand here what is computer so a computer is nothing but a computational machine which is used to process the data under the control of a user program so usually what we do with the computer we give some set of instructions we give some particular data into the computer computer process that particular data and gives you a output so can we say that the computer functionality is program execution that means it executes some program when you give the data as an input so what is the block diagram the block diagram consists of these things that means input will be given as data for a computer which will be monitored or work as a program so there will be program or you can refer this program as a software so using that particular software computer will be processing that particular data and as an output it will give you the output data this is the general functionality of computer now what is a program so the program is a sequence of instruction along with data because the sequence of instructions are designed by considering the data because if there is no data there is no use of that particular instructions or set of instructions so what is program program is a sequence of instructions along with data so program always consists to two things one is instruction other one is data now the question comes is what is instruction instruction it is a binary code designed inside the processor to perform some operation so in instruction what we do we instruct a particular machine to operate or to perform some operation so this is what written here so it is a binary code designed inside processor to perform some operation so in short we can say that when binary code is bind with some operation it is known as instruction so now let's quickly understand this particular example let cpu support eight operation eight operation then what will be the opcode size if the cpu is supporting eight operations then if i perform log of n and where n is nothing but the number of operations so log of eight will be equals to three bit that means three bits are required to represent these eight operations so here in this particular table you can see that I am having multiple operations right and these operations are represented by three bits starting from 0 1 and so on until 7 so 0 0 0 is representing addition 0 0 1 is representing multiplication and so on until 1 1 1 is representing division so these all operations will be designed by the designer so these processes are designed inside the processor and whenever we are giving some input we will be giving this particular code along with the input so that the processor will understand that what exact operation it needs to be performed on that particular given data right now let's quickly move on to the next thing what is the view now let's quickly understand what is the view with respect to the designer and with respect to the user so if we consider the designer in our mind right so designer always designs the base hardware first so once the base hardware is ready it will try to give the output 
when the input is provided so the output will be given by some sequences so like this will be some binary values 1 0 and so on so let's say here I am having n binary values so an encoder will be used to minimize the number of bits so this encoder what it will do it will give you that this n signals so these are the n signal n signals will be represented by how many bits log n bits so it will encode these n signals in log n bits and these log n bits will be converted into binary code then it will be converted into, into hexadecimal code then into the low level language this low level language is nothing but the assembly language then the compiler compiles this low level language and convert it into the high level language and then it will give you the output to the user so this top to bottom approach so this top to bottom approach is for the designer right this particular part base hardware is done by the ECE people electronics and communication engineering this complete part is considered as the part of computer organization while these three things comes under the core CS branch like we are talking about the some software or something so this is computer organization part this complete part from encoder to user code comes under the computer science and engineering and this particular designing of the base hardware is done by the electronics and communication engineering people so the top 10 so the top down approach is by the de designer but if i consider the user approach user always starts with a user code that it will give you give some input then this particular input will be given to the will be converted to the high level language this high level language will be compiled by the compiler and converted to the low level language then this low level language will be converted into the hexadecimal then into the binary code that particular binary code will be given to the decoder so this binary code will be decoded to understand the signals and their respective value then the operation will be performed in the base hardware so these are the two approaches uh, two views we can say with the respect of designer and with the respect of user now let's quickly see what is encoding and what is decoding in encoding it is a process where n signals are represented using log n bits so this is a block diagram of encoder where n signals are given as an input these n signals will be converted into the log n bits so what is the actual use if you are having n signal the encoder minimizes the space and it tells you that these n signals can be represented using the log n bits and the decoder is just opposite to the encoder here if you are having n bit then decoder produces 2 to the power n output signal so if we are having giving n bits as an input the decoder tells you that this n bit can consist how many signals right so the uh, working of this encoder and decoder are vice versa right now let's quickly move on to what is data so data is nothing but a, it is a binary code associated with value based on the data format so binary code bind with value is known as data and binary code bind with operation is known as instruction right let's say this is a binary code 101 so i am considering that you all know how to convert a binary number into the decimal number right so what is this 101 this 101 is nothing but 5 let me just explain you how you can do that so this one represent 2 to power 0 into 1 plus here it is 0 so 0 into 2 to power 1 plus here this is 1 so 1 is to 2 to power and so on if there are more values so what is this is 4 plus 0 plus 1 so overall it is 5 this is how you can convert a particular decimal a particular binary value into the decimal value but this same value can be represented by some different number if the data format changes what does it mean if I consider the signed magnitude in sign magnitude what we do is we generally consider the first bit as a sign bit right so if there is a one we consider it as a negative 
so let's say here i am having 101 and i have to convert it in the signed magnitude so this one represents the negative sign and this represents the value in signed magnitude so what is the value 0 1 is nothing but 1 so this 101 represents minus 1 in signed magnitude but if you consider the same in ones complement it will be 101 this one says that it is negative and if it is negative will be complementing it so now we have to complement this 01 will be complemented as 1 0 so it will be what 10 is nothing but 2 and this one says that it is negative so it will be minus 2 similarly if we find out the value in 2's complement 101 this is negative if this is negative that means we have to complement it will be complementing it like this so it will be 10 1 will be changed to 0 0 will be changed to 1 but if it is 2's complement till now this is same as 1's complement and if you add 1 to this this will be considered as 2's complement so it will be 1 1 this 1 1 results as 3 and this one says that it's negative so this will be minus 3 so here you can see that same kind of representation is used but the values are different for the unsigned signed ones complement and twos complement so here what here there is a role of data format so this is all because of the different data formats in the next video we'll be understanding what are the different types of data formats are available and how you can operate on those data formats so if you find this particular video useful like this video and share it with your friends and if you have not subscribed the channel till now please subscribe the channel and to connect with me on my social accounts the links are given in the description you can connect me on my social accounts as well so thank you very much for your time keep supporting keep learning have a great day